Because you're still mighty and strong So fight this battle for me, Lord And help my unbelief So I can tell all my friends Oh, thank you, Jesus, that you have won can I get somebody that came to give God some praise tonight? Come on, lift your hands all over your building and let's tell God tonight, let your power fall when your name is called through the God of the road yeah, yeah because you're still mighty Still mighty, still mighty and strong. So fight this battle for me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And help my unbelief. So I can tell all my friends. Yeah. Yeah. Praise and peace, saints of God, bless the name of the living God this morning. Thank you for being here again with us here at New Life Global Fellowship. This morning I come to you, and I come to you with a very, um, not heavy, but a joyous heart, a humble heart before the Lord. I say that to you, and as you get yourself settled with the word and get yourself before the Lord, um, to thank you again for being the type of people that pray. To thank you again for being the type of people that are committed to the Word of God. If you find yourself on here and that you're not really fully committed, I want to remind you that God is sovereign. His rules, His regulations, His statutes, His ways, and all of these things are set in stone. He is God. You know, just recently, I want to, you know, just open up this morning by thanking him above everything else. Thanking him for being who he always has been and he will always be. A loving, protecting, providing God to us. And um, I just want to thank the Lord for actually saving and keeping the life of my son, Minister Keenan, and my daughter-in-law, Minister Rebecca over the, over the weekend, over the past, you know, a couple of days. A major accident, and if I was to show you the imageries of this accident, we'll be having a much different conversation right about now. But we don't play with God. And I encourage you to make sure that you don't either. That you get to a place and point in realizing that his sand of sovereignty is a major, 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 peace that we should always make sure that we honor and I come today because it's all good until it actually hits your house sometimes I understand how God does business saints of God in many of the ways that I interact with him 
not fully knowing everything no one will but I say this to you that it is imperative say imperative it is imperative that you follow the Word of God you follow him and you understand that his ways is always above your ways lift me up in the mic a little bit please his ways is always above your ways his thoughts always above our thoughts and there's sometimes in the agendas and the way that we do life sometimes that we miss that mark but thank God for Jesus because that's how you get back home I started to tell you in the beginning of the transition of 2020 that the place of your protection and the place of your provisions is going to be in the tabernacle of the Most High God. Be it your choice to do whatever you think that you need to do, but do not take his word lightly. Do not take his word lightly at all. Coming out of the feast days, I had to be reminded as I reminded some other individuals as well, that it wasn't until that Jesus actually got himself cleansed not that he needed it but he did it so for now as he met John at the Jordan River and was baptized cleansed and purified verified and identified as the Spirit of the Lord comes as a dove and says this is my son in whom I'm well pleased hear ye him then the Bible takes a quick transition and Jesus was led of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Coming out of the Feast of Tabernacles has that same type of atmosphere. Where you came through the Day of Atonement and all of these things that we had done. Cleansed and purified. And then a test comes. And how we interact with that test can determine a lot of different things. And so I wanted to come this morning to start off to let you understand that when I come before the Lord, I don't come here to entertain. I do not come up here to entertain and I could care less about what goes on around me. I will continue to serve the Lord. I will continue to follow God. And regardless of what takes place and transpires in my life and I pray that when Paul said follow me as I follow Christ that you would take up the same resolve saints of God he told you that in this particular season it is a season of acceleration it takes one instance one instance and so therefore it encourages us to make sure that we know where that tabernacle is and make sure that we're doing what it takes to actually be in that tabernacle because the end is coming and God has a plan he has already had a plan and I'm going to come to you with a, a, a teaching today that he actually had given me about a day after the feast asking the Lord what shall I say to your people he tells me to speak to the people about words didn't fully understand it is the reason why you were with me you weren't with me actually on Lifeline. I had to do a couple of things, but in that processing, I like to hear God in fullness before I come to you. Little did I know that, you know, some situations would happen, but I am grateful to God. You know, and all of the intercessors here are grateful to God. And, you know, everyone that's there that has knowledge and, you know, close relation with the situation is grateful to God for what he has done. Is there a resounding amen in this place? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So with that saying to God, I'm not going to belay the time because, you know, this is one of going to be one of those real words today. All right? And so I want you to be prepared. Let your minds be centered. Let your distractions and your environments be still. And allow yourself to come in and hear this word that you may get to the place and point of hearing the Lord's heart and then allowing yourself to adjust yourselves and even so to go ahead and disseminate this word unto others. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you today and I thank you again for being our God, for being our shield, 
for being our buckler, for, for being our high priest, Yeshua. Thank you for, insta in in for just being you. Words are not sufficient enough, Lord God, in the language that we speak to give you the honor that we're supposed to give to you. We fall short of your glory in many ways. So easily does the enemy attempt to do so many different things with us, but your hands are ever present and we give you glory for this. We give you thanks for this, Lord God. We pray, oh God, in our hearts and our minds that the memory chambers would be an open door and not a locked one. That we could look back in at any appointed time to realize how you have been God to us. Because we identified that time is a healer and sometimes in the distance of time we can forget who you are and what you've done. May we never forget it. May we never become so mindless, Lord God, that we don't take the time to honor you and respect you and to honor you in such of a way, Lord God, that you can see our hearts before you. Where we have fallen short, we come and ask, oh God, right now, humbly, with repentant hearts, oh God, for your forgiveness. I pray, Father, in the precious name of Jesus, that you would guide me throughout this message. And that you will allow me, O oh God, to express you, Lord Father, into the atmosphere. I decrease in all self, that you may be increased, O oh God, in full measure. Be with us today, your show, as we engage this word. In the precious name of Yeshua the Christ, we pray. As we seal this and all prayers in his name. As we together say amen and amen. Saints of God, by nature of directions of the Holy Spirit, I would like for you to turn your Bibles or focus your attention upon the screens to John chapter 1. And we're going to begin at verse 1 through 7. And while you're getting there, permit me, even as you will see it on your screens, to remind you that I'm dealing today with a topic called information technology. The power of my words. Before I get into John 1, I want to frame your mindsets into understanding that there is a tapestry that was integrated into the earth's design. Everything that is within it is a part of that tapestry. It is a part of its functionality. We can't even breathe air without trees. And they don't get what they get without us. And how God takes his time to weave this entire situation is a technology so greater and more advanced than we think that we have in our, in our societies today. We tend to look at computerized situations and call it advanced technology, but can I tell you that it is limited in comparisons to what the Lord has done. We're identifying things that, uh, you know, uh, uh, might, might be new to us, saints of God, but it's definitely not on his level. Because he designed this earth and its functionality and every single one of the solar systems that we might just be identifying that's already out there and has been there. But he took some concentration according to the nature of his word and he put us in a place where we could understand that we are a part of an intricate design. Recently, my wife had taken up some coursework as she's moving towards a second master's degree and she was dealing with some information and data, you know, technology situations. And I would watch as she was going through her lessons and how she had to, you know, create and manipulate codes in an effort for her functions and her programs to work. Equally, for you being able to see me here, in front of me, saints of God, let me give you a quick little view of what's happening. Besides the studio audience, there's some lights around me and a camera that's pointed at me right now. And that camera is in our studio right now. 
And that camera is connected by some cords that plug into other pieces of equipment in this studio right now. And so if it is where I am right now and you are being able to see me where you are right now in real time, there is a tremendous amount of technology involved in that. God's technology is greater than even that. And so he laid some things out for us so that we can realize what technology exists and what he created and how we integrate with it with our own programming. I speak in these terms because today we are a technologically advanced society. With cell phones in the palm of our hands, communication moving at the speed of light, and we're able to do things that we couldn't do things in times past. But we're accelerating to something. And we have to be extremely careful on how we integrate with it because there's sometimes when there are, because of the nature of technology, there is stolen identities. With the advancement comes a whole other wave of crime, a whole other wave of evil. New and innovative ways to go ahead and commit these crimes. Things that we cannot you know, negate that takes place within our societies here in the U.S. and around the world. I say this to you because I'm framing your mindsets ahead of us jumping into Scripture to realize that we're operating as elements and aspects or code in, in, in a very intricate format of technology. Let's go to John 1 and see how this was actually framed. In John chapter 1 and verse 1, it says here, In the beginning was the Word. Say the Word. Hallelujah. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I'd like for everyone to say that last portion with me. The Word was God. Let's say it again. The Word was God. I want you to hold on to that for a quick second because I'm going to show you something. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by the Word of God. Hmm. And without the Word of God was not anything made that was made. And in the word of God was life, and the life was that was the light of men. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. I'm taking you somewhere, stand by. And verse 8 says. He was not that light. He was not that light, hallelujah, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. He, the word of God, the word that was God, right, was in the world and the world was made by him, the word. And the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, or the interchangeable, the word, to them gave he, the word, power to become the sons of God. You're going to see where I'm going with this in a few seconds even to them that believe on his name. Verse 13, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of the word, which is, was God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. 
Give it back to me a quick second. Let me show you something about that. When we read the scriptures, we, 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 we engage it sometimes and we don't really see that this is the manual given to us to integrate or, or teach us how to, you know, integrate, if you would, or to function in this place of technology that God created. There were some things that he had done and he wanted us to know how it was designed so that we can integrate and interact with it in the proper manners. Every single one of the components today that we deal with on our jobs or like again how I remind you how I'm broadcasting to you right now there is a series of intricate code binary numbers zeros and ones that are actually being utilized at this particular time to cause video to come into your homes to cause audio to be sequenced with sequenced with it in real time so that you can hear me if I raise my right hand you just saw that if I raise my left hand, you just saw that in real time. And then again, the technology is so advanced that it causes us to have an archive. That if you weren't here to see this in the live and you're, you're catching it in the rebroadcast, time would have been suspended, if you would. That this message would become too available to you at that particular time, but still be relevant. What a way to interact with technology. And that's by man's design. All of the electrical components doing what they do, interacting with different servers and causing this to happen. Say to God, if we can understand the concept of technology, even as we use it and manipulate it in our societies today, to give ourselves, it'll be robbery to ourselves, I should say, if we do not understand the technology and how to interact with it the way that God designed it. Because we're living right in a voice activated atmosphere when he designed it he designed it with voice saints of god and to fast track a little bit you know that he created a man and put him in the garden to till the land well saints of god i remind you i asked this question to the congregation times past but i'm asking you and all today to think about this how do you till or tend to a land that has been created in speech do I go with a shovel and do I go with a pickaxe? Is that how I integrate or take care or till the land that was created in speech? No. And while there may be work for my physical hands to do, the concept of words, the concept of speech is so utterly important to God right about now that he put us in a timeline within synchronicity as you would have learned as we came to the feast days that we have we are entered into the season of pay. Pay deals with the mouth and what I say. Pay deals with the mouth and what I utter out of my mouth in my speech. But I have to always recall that when I open my mouth to speak, I'm interacting with some, some, some technology that had already been set in place for this earth to function the way he called it to function. So in John 1, God says to us, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning, in the concept of it all was the word. It is the fiber. It is the texture. It is that the intricate tapestry is based upon the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. And so that's why in reading it for you, I tend to change the words to put the word you know, that was God in play. So we can get a better idea. It's not just reading what you may not see on your screens according to the line of text, but it's expanding that text to break it down to the integral code. You see, I can read it. Put it up there again for me. Let me show it to you. Bless God. Right? It says, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. In the same was the be in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Now, Him 
is what you actually see here. But when I get ready to break down that line or that code or get into the intricacy of that word, that three-letter word, him, I begin to realize based on the first line that this is the word that, that is God. So in changing it up, I say all things were made by him or all things were made by the word that, it, that, that was God or is God. It paints a deeper picture for me than just what the line of itself reads. Let's back that up a little bit further. I want you to take you to Genesis chapter 1. Go there with me, Genesis chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Watch this now. It says, in the beginning, God, if I was to put the word, it would still be the same person. In the beginning, the word created the heavens and the earth. Isayarabosha. In the beginning, the word created, God created, God who is the word, who was with God and was God and is God. God, right, the word, in the beginning, the word created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of the word. And the spirit of the word, which is, was, 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 was with God and was God and is God, the spirit of the word moved upon the face of the waters. I'm talking to you about the integral design of the technology. And the word, or God, or God that was the word or is the word. And the word said, let there be light. And there was light. Hmm. Bring it back to me. See, 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 see. When you begin to start breaking this down, you'll understand you cannot engage with information technology as only the end user. Even the end user has to be given some instructions to be able to know how to use the program correctly. The end user has a responsibility. He may not be or she may not be the programmer or the creator of the code or the program, but in to interact with the program, you must have instructions. You must have instructions to, to, inter, to, in, to, to interact with the program. So he begins to break it down in Genesis chapter 1 to tell you how the program was designed and who created it. And then he reminds us in John chapter 1 that this is how this was actually done. So there, there's, there is an emphasis here that allows us to realize, precious ones, that we got to get into the understanding of how to handle the word. How to handle the word in the integral design and the system that he created. I keep telling you sometimes when you, you know, we've been here for a while and if you've been here for a long time with us or even if this is your very first time, we welcome you here at New Life. But I want to help you to understand something that words form, form um, they formalize our sentences. They formalize our, 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 the, the construct of our interaction. The only thing that the word was not used to create by itself was man. Hmm. Study your Genesis and you'll realize what I just told you. The only thing that the word was not used, I want to remind you what I'm trying to get you to see and to understand is that God of himself, God of himself, right, used the instruments of the word to create. He used the instruments of the word to create. And the only thing that required an additional, you know, uh, a, a bit of effort was man. Because he did say, let us make. So, you know, he did speak in that regard. But the tapestry of man was by unique design as he was making a version of himself. But I remind you again that Adam is nothing more than a clay sculpture until that mouth. Bro, 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 you know, blue, blue, blue breath into our nostrils and gave us the ability to live. You and I couldn't formulate a word out of our mouths unless that breath was there to push it out. So if I'm in a system 
that is created by words. And I'm given a responsibility to maintain it while I'm in it by the nature of words. How important should words be to me? How important should words be to me? Am I loose with my tongue? How important is words to me? You got to understand that Satan, I remind you again, was never a man himself. He just manipulates man. And so in the creation process, when God put everything together and he began to cut things back on in Genesis chapter 1, and he got there and he designed man and woman and gave them some instructions. He gave them the manual to let them understand that I am the word and I created you by, by the nature of my hands, but I spoke everything around you in your economy into existence. Now go and speak as I speak. Align with me so that you speak what I speak. And as long as you have that alignment I'm with you Satan understands that he understands the concepts of that I told you that advanced technology is a word that we use loosely because our technology is not as advanced as this because way back in Genesis he had a design that we still trying to figure out and we can't get it right yet ignorant in the way that we do things Genesis chapter 3, turn there with me. Let me show you when the virus comes in. Because we're talking information technology, there was sometimes you have to understand that there was a system of viruses that are launched to, to, to manipulate the program, to cause it to dysfunction. Genesis chapter 3 starts here and says, Now the serpent, say the serpent, hallelujah, was more subtle than any beast of the field. Hmm. What a programmer. He's more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Hmm. And he what? He said unto the woman. All right? He said unto the woman, Yea, has God said. Look at how he's approaching this because I'm telling you he's coming after information. All right, he's coming after information. The, the, the summation of your words, right, creates the format or the foundation of information. So he comes in to figure out, do you even know what you're involved in? Do you even know the design? Yea, has God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said, Notice everybody is speaking. So there's a, there was a transference and an interaction by the nature of words. A conversation is ensuing, all right? You know, inside of the design, inside of the program, a conversation is engaging. End users are interacting with, 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 with some other stuff right about now. And, 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 and so there's, there's, there's words going back and forth. In the first word, in the first, in the first line, first uh, verse, verse of Genesis three, and he said unto the woman, he engages the program. Has God said? He's talking about the Creator. That has God said that you shall not eat of, of, of every tree in the garden. Now I want to realize: Do you understand functionality here? And the woman said, as end user, unto the serpent, we may eat of every fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God, the creator, Hasa God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. The transaction is still going on, saints of God. Programming is still functioning here, but the virus gets introduced right here. And the serpent said, no, it, no, notice it doesn't say that the serpent did. He didn't do a thing. Learning how to interact with how this system has been designed is going to give us an advantage in this entire, in this, in this entire lifetime, saints of God. Because the serpent is not doing anything to them, right? He's manipulating information, attempting to introduce a false code that's going to derail the entire program. So he gets there and he says, you know, the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall, sure, ye shall not surely die. 
That term, which I should have highlighted for you as well, is the virus itself. Ye shall surely, you shall not surely die is the code, is the virus itself. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil. All of that is the virus sent to manipulate the code. And when the woman saw, when the woman saw, which means that she has come to a place and point where she is convinced, where she sees, observes, takes it in, and is now convinced and accepts it. And the virus is now inside of the programming. When she saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took up the fruit thereof and did eat. And like a virus, we pass it on to others. What does that look like today, saints of God? That looks like some of us when we're walking around here with stinking thinking. And we get to a place and point when we get ready to go ahead and start perverting others. That comes to a place and point when you don't fully understand the matrix. And we're starting to function outside of his will. That comes to a place and point when we lose the respect or we lose the honor for his design. And we don't necessarily realize what we're doing. Somewhere along the line, we start doing things, and it's, it, it's, it's, it's disastrous in nature for Adam and for Eve. And we don't believe that it would be disastrous for us. Since God, I want to come to remind you, because this applies to every one of us. Pastor Sheldon included. Monkey around with the things of God, and I can guarantee you, you'll be the only monkey in the room. Because at the end of the day, I'm telling you that he is coming with some serious vengeance. We only know him as the loving, tender Jesus, but you do not see him as the disciplinarian that chastises whom he loves. Why? Because he desires that none of us miss the mark. That's his desire. The enemy desires that you do. And that you miss what he can't never get to. Understand the design. She saw it's good for food, gives to her husband to eat. Watch Genesis 3 and verse 7. And the eyes of them both were opened. Right? Programming is now defiled now. Watch this. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together to make themselves apron. And, the, and, the, and, the, and they heard the voice of the Lord God doing what? You see, we don't understand the integral design of this. We don't understand the integral design of this, and we read right over it, and we don't really even understand what we're reading. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking. What does God's voice, what is God's voice able to do? They heard the voice of the Lord God walking. Hmm. In the garden, in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees and gardens. You see, 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 see the trees of, of the garden. See, saints of God, the program is now corrupted. The program is now corrupted. And the Lord God called unto Adam. So they heard his voice walking, but he didn't call them until you see this here in verse 9. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. You see, when I was created and designed and I was in alignment, I was not afraid of him. But there was a corruption in a line of code that has now been introduced to me. And I find myself in a situation. Put the image back up for me real quick. Remember, we're talking about information technology. Pay attention to your screens. There is a tree where the CPU should be. 
Because we all, no matter where we are and what we do in life, we will always be gathered under this tree. That's where we identify whether we're right or we're wrong, right here by this tree. I'll deal with that in another time. That's too powerful to give to you right now. Too powerful. That's, that's, let's just keep going. Mm. Genesis 3 and verse 9, the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who, not what? Who told thee that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat? Did you violate the parameters of the program? And the man said, here we go back again. We're interacting again. And the man said, the woman. You already know what she said. Now go down here to verse 13 with me. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said what? The serpent. <laughs> you see, when we're re-engineering now the code, we go back to finding out how this virus got introduced. So the man says the woman, and the woman says the serpent. Notice that God doesn't ask the serpent a thing because he's identified where the virus is. Not that he didn't know. But he's, he's, he's re-engineering this in such of a way that we can see that he's putting something in place. And, you know, a faulty way of interacting with his design could be disastrous for us. So he says, you know what? Unto the serpent, because you've done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity, say enmity. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. A very first instance of seeing God create by the power of his words, creates a man to continue to manage the programming. Man allows the perversions to come in gets you know, infected by it and then passes it on. And then when it gets passed on and the entire program is corrupted, it has to go back now to the designer to put it in order. That process that happened in the garden continues to replicate itself throughout our entire generation, saints of God. And long after this message, it will continue to do it until the day of judgment. Because we still don't yet realize what we're involved in and what's really happening in the interdimensional realms. We see things happen in the natural and Satan tries to cut off that piece of information for us. So we're only dealing with, with, with horse blinders on upon what's in front of us. We're only concerned and concentrated on what's in front of us. Don't see the bigger picture. Because he's blocking that view. You, 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 you're not, you know, in outside of alignment, you lose that peripheral vision. And so in 2 Corinthians 10 and 3, 5, let's go to that. Let's go to that. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 through 5. Some more information comes down to us now. It tells us what here. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For though we be in the natural and see the natural aspects of life, we do not engage in the natural. The believer does not engage in the natural. I need to show you how these programs function, so I need to let my servants come before you to remind you of its design. Because he's still after the information. I told you before that information shapes perspective. And how your mind is framed is exactly how your heart is positioned and how your mouth will speak. How your mind is framed. Let's, 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 re, let's re-engineer this so you understand. If I know that I'm in an environment that has been designed by speech, I know now that there is an importance to watch what I say. 
But what I say doesn't just come out of my mouth because I just open my mouth and some words fall out. What I say is a byproduct of what I've heard. And what I've heard, it turns around and gets formatted inside, inside of my system. And then where my heart is, right, where my heart is, from the uttermost part of my heart, my mouth will speak. That's another part of the programming that's written in the, in the programmer's manual or the end user's manual, which is the word. From the uttermost part of the heart, my mouth would speak, which means what? Inside of me, what I have taken in inside of me is now manipulated. If it is of God, then it is aligned. If it is not of God, it's manipulation that gets here and stirs up my mind, stirs up my heart, stirs up the mental framework inside of me, and I go around and utter this stuff into the atmosphere. Mm. Look what he tells us in verse 4, 2 Corinthians 10. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through the word. <laughs> That's why I had to take you there first so you can get a framework. They're mighty through the word which was God and is God. To the pulling down of those strongholds that the enemy tries to introduce. And the casting down of what? Look at how it interacts with us with imagination. Saying to God, can I take you to this understanding or this place or scenario so you could understand that we're living in a techno technologically driven society? Watch this. The machine at the bank, your ATM machine at the bank is a machine. It is not a human. It does not require food, nor life, nor sleep. It is a machine. You and I will interact with that machine from time to time. When the individual has a desire to withdraw some funds from their bank accounts, bless God, and they get there to the ATM machine, that is a human element that is interacting with the machine. But when you're on your way to the bank, there is, there is some you know, anticipation, there is some emotional stuff that we're processing that we're going to get in front of this machine and interact with it. And when we interact with it, right, we, we, we should be able to retrieve what we came there for. If I put my card into the machine and I begin to use the programming as designed, hallelujah, I, I turn around and I get the money back to God be the glory. I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm good that I got what I had come here for. But when I go to this machine and I put my card in the machine and I come back to get what I thought should be there and it tells me insufficient funds, it affects something in me psychologically. It affects something in me emotionally. How does this machine have the ability to interact with me like that? Because the machine told me. <laughs> it doesn't have to speak, say to God. It used the information in the technology to convey something to me that had an effect on me. <laughs> An inanimate machine has the ability to do that with us. Your entire disposition would change if you put the card in and you see insufficient funds. Whole demeanor has now changed. And the only one walking away from that transaction with an emotion is you and me. The machine could care less. It's ready for the next customer. Hmm. Satan is ready for the next customer. And the only one walks away bruised. The only one walks away with a heart sunken is us. We who were given priesthood when we align ourselves. And the only reason about that it's because we fail to understand how to move within the program. So the weapons of our warfare, put it up again for me, are not carnal saints of God, but they're mighty through the word to, to, to the pulling down of the strongholds and casting down of the vain imagination. These, these imaginations, 
this framework that gets affected by the information that I hear. He talks about casting it down, not by your own thoughts, not by your own resolve. The only way that gets casted down is when you apply his programming, his code to it. And when I apply his code to it, I'm not only bringing down the imaginations, but I'm bringing down now every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of who? The word. Not your own knowledge, no intellect. My knowledge and your knowledge is garbage compared to the knowledge of God. Foolishness compared to the knowledge of God. Yet still we use our own thought patterns to formulate our own mindsets and to speak things into the atmosphere in a system that has been designed by him erroneously. Not only does it cast down the imaginations, it brings every high thing that exalted itself down low. And it then brings into captivity every thought. Look at the functionality of the programming. It brings to in captivity every thought. Can I suggest to you that we are a generation of people whose thoughts are not captive at all? We are a generation of people whose thoughts are running free and wild is the reason why today you have to turn around and use pronouns to describe what God had created. There is a virus in the program, saints of God, if you don't realize what's taking place in this. The original programming created two models, created in his image and likeness, a male and a female. And you are being told today right, by individuals who come with viruses to manipulate the program that there is no longer the man and there's no longer the woman. You're going to refer to me as I, re I think that you should refer to me. I identify as is now that code. So let's rewrite the medical manuscripts because, you know, you may be reminded that there are, there, there, there are components and medical situations that happens to men only and then there are those that happen to women only. So when you don't identify as a woman and she has her cycle, what, how, how are we getting ready to deal with all of that? And somewhere along the line, there are individuals that are supposed to be the highest thinking creatures on the planet. And we are so dumb that we sit back and subscribe to this stuff. Because you don't know how to interact with the program. Don't send me no nasty emails. I don't read them. Could care less. My God created a man. My God created a woman. And that is it. At the end of the day, I need you to understand. The times are coming when you're going to be directly confronted because of what your belief systems are. And if you don't even have a grip on the words you speak, how then is your mind framed according to his? How, how is your mind framed according to the knowledge of God as suggested in 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 5? How is our mind shaped in that form? The technology again now is now corrupted. We're back to the tree again. Hmm. Saints of God, I want you to understand that while you may open up your mouth and say whatever feels you feel like could come out of it, let me remind you that every single word you form out of your mouth is a spirit. Oh, you may, you, you, may, you may not even known that. Let's go to John, John 6 and verse 63 so I can remind everyone again that every word that protrudes out your mouth is a spirit. Let's just get here and see that. Hallelujah. Watch this now. Watch this with me. It is the spirit. Say the spirit. Hallelujah. It is the spirit that quicken it. The flesh profits nothing. It profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are what? They are spirit and they are life. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. When sent out of my mouth, my father used to tell me this a long time ago, that one of the things that come not back is the spoken word. You cannot go back and take a spoken word. That's why we got to thank God that he sent Christ. 
so that you can send a word ahead of it in repentance to cut this off. Because once you send this out of your mouth, it begins to cultivate things. Because you have a failure to understand how the program works doesn't mean that the program doesn't work. And so we've been, long, we've been running around here with loose lips and wondering why. And this is the reason we have to go back to the drawing board and recognize where we fell short and go back to how the functionality of the system was originally designed. That's why Christ had to come. He didn't send anything else. He sent the word. Don't believe me? Matthew chapter 12, verse 37. Give me something hard. Matthew chapter 12, verse 37. We're, don't worry about the music playing. I ain't done yet. Matthew chapter 12, verse 37, because I got a devil I got to get ready to beat up. Just turn around here to Matthew chapter 12 and verse 37. You dare to touch mine? Watch what happens. Matthew chapter 12, verse 37. It says here, for by, by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. What's inside of me? What is inside of me? What is going on with me that I don't understand the power of my own words? There are many of us who are precious souls. And all of us fall to this. Saying things erroneously. But God reminds, reminds us there was nothing erone, ero, erroneous about your design. He reminds me that there is nothing erroneous about your design, Sheldon. There is nothing erroneous about the design of your family. There is nothing erroneous about the design of mankind. There is nothing erroneous about it. Forgive them for they know not what they do. Why do you think Yeshua said that? Because we framed a thought pattern. And we speak and we act according to that thought pattern that was fostered by what we entertained inside of our hearts. So Jesus on a cross says, forgive them for they know not what they do. How powerful are these words into God? <laughs> Psalms 19 verse 1 to 3. I'm not done yet. I got a couple of things to show you. Psalms 19, verses 1 to 3. We'll be touching this in a few minutes again. But David touched on this and he says, listen. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament shows his handiwork. The heavens declare the glory of the word. And the firmament shows the word's handiwork. The heaven declares the glory of the word and the firmament shows the word's handiwork. Day on to day utter its speech and night on to night showeth knowledge. There is no speech. Say no speech. I want everybody to say there is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Saints of God, you couldn't even whisper something and the word does not, and, 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 the, and the atmosphere does not hear it. This is the reason why the children of Israel were dealt with so heavily for murmuring. This is the reason why that happened because you couldn't even whisper it into the atmosphere without something happening. Because it is his design. Don't believe me? Let's go in further. Judges chapter 11. Let's look at a little story here and I'll show you how words can be painful. Watch this. Judges chapter 11 beginning at verse 29. We're dealing with a young man called Jephthah. Jephthah is having some issues with the children of Ammon. And he is dealing with an ensuing battle that's getting ready to happen. And he's seeking the Lord for his guidance. Let's read what happened here when we didn't pay attention to words. Watch this. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah. 
and he passed over Gilead and Manasseh and passed over Mizpeh of Gilead and from Mizpeh of Gilead he passed over unto the children of Ammon and Jephthah did what he vowed a vow unto the Lord so he had it inside of his heart you can't make a vow unless you have it inside of your heart from the uttermost part of the heart the mouth speaks so watch this and Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord and said this is why scripture says it's better for you to not even vow than to vow and break it watch this and Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord and said this is what he says if thou shall without fail deliver the children of Ammon into my hands then it shall be that whatsoever come forth out of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Ammon shall surely be the Lord's and I will offer it up for what for a burnt offering listen to this man operating in emotions before the Lord hmm. Jephthah vows a vow unto the Lord unto the word and said, if you shall not fail to deliver the children of Ammon into my hands, then it shall be that whatsoever comes forth out of my doors to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, surely, you know, it should surely be the Lord's. And I will offer it up for a burnt offering. So Jephthah passed over the children of Ammon to fight against them. And the Lord delivered them into his hands. There is now an agreement that has been established. Because Jephthah is in the earth. Jephthah is within the program. Jephthah has now, in, you know, has, has now put some information into the technology that he's existing in. And that word goes out and has to perform. So God honors what he says. And God delivers the children of Ammon into Jephthah's hands. Now watch this. And he smote them from Aurora, even till, till thou come to Mineth, even twenty cities. And unto the plains of the vineyards with a great, very great slaughter. Thus the children of Ammon was subdued before the children of Israel. Watch this. And Jephthah came to Mizpah unto his house. And behold who? And behold his daughter <laughs> came out to meet him with timbrels and with dances. She was his only child. <laughs> Beside her he had neither son nor daughter. And when it came to pass, when he saw her, he rent or tore his clothes and what? Said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low. Thou art one of them that trouble me. For I have what? Opened my mouth unto the Lord. And I cannot go back. Bring it back to me. Saints of God, you want to celebrate Yeshua? Celebrate him by doing what he says to do when we speak out of turn. Celebrate him when he gives us an opportunity to bring the wrongs back into alignment and correct it. Because Jephthah didn't have that opportunity because this is Old Testament and Christ wasn't here just yet. We don't understand how we interact with things. We don't. And then turn around now, he says, I open my mouth before the Lord. I open my mouth unto the Lord. Don't misunderstand that quote. When you open up your mouth, even when you're not speaking to God, you're speaking within his system. This is the reason why we all have the responsibility to check ourselves 
This is not a time for haughtiness. This is a time for humility. For all of us. Because one, he has told us, it is a period of acceleration of judgment and of blessing. Two, he's reminded us that the tabernacle of the Most High God is the place of our provision and our protections. He's reminded us constantly that this is not a game. He's reminded us that I'm pouring out my spirit upon all flesh. In a season and time where my hand is going to delineate those who are mine and those who are not. But this is where we come into play with our interactions because our words cause us to format transactions inside of the program. Jephthah hurt, torn down. The story continues to go if you want to find it in Judges 11. That the daughter comes out and he talks to her and tells her what he had done as you've seen here in verse 35. And the daughter being so honorable says what you have said unto the Lord let it be so are you kidding me what you said unto the Lord let it be so she said only permit me to go up and protect my virginity so I don't be defiled you, you got I, I, I couldn't this this was not part of this message but I want you to understand this young lady's resolve her father was coming home from a war she's glad to see him because he's alive she runs out with timbrels to dance before him to to celebrate the joy of his return and in the process of all of this he recognized that outside of her she doesn't know what he's done he spoke something to the lord on the battlefield and then he connects it. Wow, she's the first person that came out of my door. I'd rather it had been a chicken. I'd rather it had been one of the, one of the animals, not, not my daughter. The only child I got. And then she turns around with a, an unimaginable resolve in honor. What you've said to the Lord, let it be so. And goes up into a mountain to protect her virginity for two months. And comes back down so that the transaction could be complete. What did she do? She presented herself a living sacrifice unblemished. That's what she did. So that he wouldn't make an offering I don't know if you hear me. He, she, saying to God, that is not part of my message, but the Spirit of the Lord is causing me to see this right here. She went up to protect her virginity to the mountains for two months to come down and to become a sacrifice that he would offer as he said to the Lord that he was going to do and it would not have been a rejected offering because she was not blemished. You want to know how this design has been constructed? Let us not walk ignorantly before the Lord. As I bring it down here, I go back now to Psalms. Chapter 19, verse 7. Saints of God, I'm reminding you today that we have a responsibility to do as the Lord says do and to follow what Christ has said. David of himself understood this so well because he was a constant violator. As an end user, David was a mess. He's the kind of guy that if you were playing 2K with him, you'd kick him out because he just wants to violate all the rules. Psalms 19 and verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. The law, the construct, the design, the programming is perfect. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statues of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold. Yea, than much fine gold. 
sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant what? Warned. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned. And in keeping of them, there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. He back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright. I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the what? Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you. Deliver it now, Lord God, which you've given me to deliver. I pray, Father, in the precious name of Jesus, that it will touch the hearts and the minds of every one of us, understanding that none of us are above each other. I ask, O God, in the precious name of Jesus, that you would reset us. And allow us to function the way that we were designed. In all of our ways, we are to acknowledge you so that you can lead and direct our paths. Forgive us for where we've gone wrong in this. I pray right now, Lord God, that you would bestow mercy upon us, Lord God. And thank you. Thank you, Lord God, from the measures and every depth of my being. For saving my son and my daughter-in-law. I thank you right now, Lord God, for these precious souls. Here in the studio audience, the local body and the international community at large. And how you save them as well. Because it only takes an instance to recognize that you are out of this domain and entered into eternity. How and where we are in eternity, Lord God. Help us to be reminded that we have to be careful with our postures. Careful with our hearts, careful with our words in this domain that you've created. I thank you for hearts, oh God, that are endeavoring to seek after you and how you put all of this together and realize that we would stumble over ourselves is the reason why you sent Yeshua. Yeshua, we could never thank you enough for the sacrifice that you have been and the sacrifice that you continuously give interceding for us even now. Holy Spirit, continue to lead us and guide us. And we're careful to give you all the grace, the glory, and the honor. We seal this and all prayers in the unmatched name of Yeshua the Christ, as we together say, amen and amen. Since of God, I'm thanking you again for your prayers. I'm thanking you for standing with the family. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a rough road to get everybody back. My daughter-in-law took the brunt of everything. So I'm going to ask you to really stand in there. From time to time, I ask you to come and join on the prayer line. And that's not only because of I just want you to be on there. But these are intercessors in this house. See, Satan is not playing Satan. And so I want you to understand, when I invite you to this prayer line, and I tell you to send the invitations out to others, you do not know what you're interrupting. And you do not know how God is going to do a thing. I'm asking you, pleading with you, on the borderline of begging you to take him seriously. Take the time to search yourself and to see what you need to be doing in front of the Lord. Don't evaluate yourself. Ask the Holy Spirit to do it. And let God show you what he wants you to do. Should you decide to continue the fellowship with us going forward, and show you the screen, you know, and the app is on the screen and how you connect with us from around the world, free of charge. You don't have to do a thing. But there's a blue button there that's circled for you and it's called intercessory prayer. You may be in need of that. We all need it. That intercessory prayer button is active Mondays at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. When the Mondays uh, and 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as well. It's active on Wednesdays, 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's active on Fridays, 
6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and is active on Saturdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks to God. Do yourself a favor. Download it and join us on those prayer times. It's also listed on it when you, when you, when you download the app. Let's stand together in prayer, in unity. Today you're praying for me, but I can guarantee you that everybody here is praying for you. Let's go ahead and do this the way that we were designed to do it and give God the ultimate glory for it all. Thank you again. And we'll see you at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the prayer line. See you then. Bye now.